and then how comes the rate of time? Vasudeva Maharaj took his son to Gopur and took Yog Maya and how from there Uttana, Agatu, Pakatu, Sambandhan Lija and then coming to Vrindavan. Kaliya Daman, Agatu, Pakatu, all. He saw after that Brahma Mohan Lila, Indra Mohan Lila, and then Rosh Lila, and then oh, Gopi Ghi, Brahma Ghi, and Buddha came in uh, and he heard and saw by his transcendental eyes and heard by <coughs> By the transcendental ears, everything. And everything was going right in the air. And after that, he saw a book, lamenting for And then, returned to Mathura. And Krishna was attacked by, at that, by Jarasandha so many times. And in one night he took all Mathura and went to Vata in a fort. And how he began the rise to Yajya of Maharaj Yudhisthi. And then strictly Jarasandh was killed by him by the power of Rukmini Shaktabhama and all marriage. He saw Sula Hajja twins. Oh, they were imprisoned in Nargasur prison. And now Krishna opened the door and he took all these. Married in one night with as many the twins were as much Krishna became. Nasty and became one. Oh, what is this? And after that, oh, Paradevi Bah, Revati, with Revati, and others, eh? and in the end, he saw to Dhamma, he came to Mathura, Dwarka, eh? and Krishna gave nothing openly, but internally he gave everything to him. And now he became more than a king. And after that, finishing this and Nam Sankrita Namajasya Sat Pat Pranasanam Pranamo Dukha Samanam Tam Namam. And then he saw that. Now Krishna wants to finish his dynasty of or each other. No. They fought outwardly, but never internally. It was like a magic, magic human lady of us. And Bhakta Tandi of us. And Brahma, Shankar, and other saw that anyone is not killed, Krishna simply had blessed them to his rope <laughs> and he had quickly written with own form. So he gave all the knowledge to Buddha and something he kept and told Vidur to go to Patrikashram to Maitre and he will give him knowledge. And then he gave. And Dwarda Sashkanda. How Dennis he was finished. Bhuha. And then what he did? Hmm? He also saw Maya Devi, who was behind Krishna, not in form, because he was, she was sent somewhere. Because he is covering their souls with Trigunatvik Devi. 
and mind. And Jeev is superior than Maya, this Maya, not your Maya, Maha Maya. But even he is controlled by Maya. And those who are misusing their independence, they are coming from marginal line to this world. And those who are very fortunate by the mercy of Krishna, by good association, they are returning to their home. Guru And anarcho pasamam sakhat bhakt yoga madhokhyaya lokasya ayyanato vidvan chakrishan. He saw that all persons are not grasta. In their heart, there are so many others. And they don't want to return anywhere. They want to enjoy Maya. So, for them, oh, he wrote all what he saw in his samadhi. Hmm. Lokasya ajanato, those who don't, don't know all these things, for them, Shastra Sankhita means samadhi, Granth Srimad Bhagavatam. And Jasya Vai Suya Manam Krishna Paramakurse Bhakti Rupa Padyata Punsa Shop Mohaya. If anyone hears that Samadhi Bhata, Samadhi Granth Srimad Bhagavatam, the glorification of Krishna and the teachings of Krishna, Krishna Paramakurse Bhakti Vikram. Prima Bhakti will come and thus when Prima Bhakti will come in what proportion according to that Tathamna? Oh, so more high of this point will go. And anyhow he attracted his son, Nabitya Niratam. There is nothing to do this, with this world. So I totally did a child from this world. But anyhow he attracted. And he uh, uh, taught him all Srimad Mahatma. Though he was Atma Ram Sukhde Goswami, but by the sweet pastimes of Krishna, he was so much attracted that he never used to be at the place for five minutes even, and now for so many long time he was with his Guru Dev, Father, Yasuke. And then some, they had some doubt. How? It, it was possible that Sukhdev Goswami was Atma Ram and never whether Five minutes, more than five minutes, go to Hangal. And he was there and he learned Srimad Bhagavatam, a very big book, and then he told Srimad Atma Ramascha Muneyo, Urugantha Urukrame, Ahat Kurvanta Hai Tukan Bhakti in Thambhud. The qualities of Krishna, the glorification of Krishna is so sweet that even Atma Ram can be attracted. No doubt, no wonder that Sukhdev Goswami began to come to their state, his father, and he learned everything. Now, we should follow. What process followed Yasuke? What? First he had strong belief in his Guru Dev. No doubt. And what he told he followed. So we should try 
लाइफ है इफ यू कम इन समाधि यू कैन रियलाइज ऑल दीज थिंग्स डोंट थिंक दैट इट इज इम्पॉसिबल एनी वन कैन डू बाय दी मर्सी and it may be that by the mercy of guru and gauranga and of krishna or oh, there will be only this everything will be possible by guru dev so we should try to always stop with a strong belief that guru can be do this krishna can do this. we should always be try to be loyal to him don't doubt anything in him never and try to be like that krishna has told in gita kya sat paripasni na sevaya upadeshanti jnana jnana now come with me Then he began to move. Shuta Goswami, or Shuta Dev Goswami to Parikshit, and Sud to Sona, and Sanak Sanandan to Nara. Oh, there are so many. There are so many bhakta, so many, and all are coincidental. All are coincidental. He began to tell that. Mahā battle was about to be finished. Then killed all the brothers of Uddhavan, especially Dushasan, and he what did? Oh, and by that God he gave it to Draupadi, and she finished the case. And then in the last, in club battle, <coughs> by the power of Krishna, by suggestion of Krishna, him oh, get a club on it. Oh, you wanted to uh, that Rocky should see naked here, so I will face it. And he became Nishinga Dev. The power of Nishinga Dev came in him. Even that he challenged anyone can. Then Arjun took him. Oh, I know. This is for all. Be silent today. I have given him power of Nishinga Dev. You cannot, myself cannot do anything. Be silent. <laughs> And then. He was silent, and after that, he was. He was told the Ajanga to die, and then in battle field he was the law. Those who had found out returned back to their homes, not homes, another, another, and here. अस्वस्थमा विद कृपाचार्य कृत परमा के हिवाई लवेंटिंग टू सी दैट इज प्रभु टू चौथन वन देन ही टोल प्रोमिस दैट आई विल किल फाइव पॉइंट वन टू डे जस्ट नाउ इन नाइट आई विल ब्रिंग देयर हेड्स सो ही वेंट इन दी सिवी ऑफ पांडवा सिवी कैंप ऑफ पांडवा बट कृष्ण ट्रिकली टू कवे देम Anywhere else. So, in the camp of Duryodhan, where he was killed, and it was conquered by Pandava there. Hmm? And here, uh, with Draupadi, Pandu Pandu Krishna was there. And in this Pandu camp, all were sleeping. The sons, five Pandava the uh, sons of Pandava, and with Varma. Um, Krishna 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 Krishna
Dhrut Dhrutumna, who killed the Dronachar. And all army, rest army was sleeping. And anyhow, by the power of Shankar, Aswasthama went there. And when they were sleeping, in sleeping, he killed all. He killed four, uh, five Pandava, son, and took their heads and happily came to Sojuna. And he gave that, I have cut the heads of Pandava. <coughs> and Sojuna saw, oh, what you have done? You have finished my Pans even, dynasty even, and not that. But I cannot give you off. Then you know, oh, be away from me. And thus, he knew that I have not killed Pandavas. And then he was going. He was trying to escape anywhere, anyhow. But Arjun went, returned to camp and saw his sons are killed and all others are there. Then he became very curious and he take it pratikya or I will kill Asasthama. <coughs> Where he will be? Any word in word in this coin, in Pata, in anywhere he will be. I will kill him. So and then he took his ganti and rub okay. and he went to sir. And he, Aswasthama saw, oh, Arjun had come, what to do? Then he shooted from her. But he did not know how to return back. His father never taught him. But to Arjun he did. Then Arjun was the, he asked Krishna what to do? And all will be Brahma's producer. He stopped. Then he did. And then he caught Aswasthama. And he tightened in his rug with rope and brought it to Krishna told, why you are not killing him? He is at the time he has killed all. Terror. Terror. Yeah. All you must kill. Then told, I want to kill at once. You should kill him. Krishna also told him. But Arjun was thinking something. Why the intelligent person? He gave Asasthama in the Lord feet of Jau. Now he goes. You can give him any punishment as you like. Then she began to wait. I have lost my four or five sons by this cruel person. But if you are killing him, then his wife and mother will weep as I am weeping. So don't kill him. Give up. He should repent himself. Don't. But Arjun told that uh, what I have told that you should kill, you have promised that I will kill. He is also telling what to do. Then. Krishna Arjun knew and he saved his and took money he had lost. You will one. Now he became Apamani and money was taken. So now he was stay him. No power anymore. No power. Stay him means Mukpa Koi Shoha and he said, free. Then at once he thought that I am so much insulted by them. So Uttara, this, the wife of Abhimanyu, in Om she had Parikshit Maharaj, ten months. She was going to but in the meantime, <laughs> Asasthama with Brahmastra 
He wanted to kill their son also. And he suited. And she ran after Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, save me. Ratsamam, Ratsamam, Trahi, Trahi. I'm taking you out, sir. Kunti, Draupadi, all running came to Krishna. And Krishna, what did? In one form, he went into Hambok, Uttara. And with his club, shaped like Pangusta Parima, Chaturbhur, Pitamba Bhai. And with a club, he uh, set Parikshit and uh, Usko Sant Kardiya Brahmastra Go. Set. Usko Sant Kardiya. Uska Jute Sa Usko Kardiya. And then, oh, Krishna came out. At that time, Parikshit was boy, but he was thinking, oh, who is this person? Who is this person? So he is called Parikshit. Exactly one. Every one. Oh, that person who saved me in my mother's home, oh, where he is? Where he is? He is he? He is he? He is he? Like that. So, Mahabhava. Mahabhava. Thus, after this Parikshit Maharaj came from the home of one great country. So that's So that's fine. Or Parikshit asked again to Parikshit has all the qualities that Krishna has. And that Krishna came from Golo to protect cow, Vaishnav, Jagya and other things. Parikshit was also like that. And he was very, very strong personality of the He even checked Kali Yoga. And he was so much bhakt of Brahman. But why he did some mistake that the son of that Samik Rishi oh, cost him? That after seven days, a Taksha, poisonous snake will come and Why? And he told, I think that this was the this was the desire of Krishna himself. Other reason for Asambha. Asambha is possible. How he can? But anyhow Krishna did. One day he was going to hunt him. He never hunted. And he stood there. But <coughs> the kings of India like doing Shatri. And he was whole day, no water, nothing to eat. Passing here and there, become thirsty and hungry. So in the end, in the evening he went to the ashram of Samik Muni and he asked water and some food. But Rishi was in Samadhi. Not hearing, no knowing that who is has come or not. And then he became very angry, angry, in first time, it may be, and so angry. And he took a dead serpent, snake, and gave him to God. It is for you. <laughs> that I came here thinking, I asked God water and something for and you could have it. He gave and returned back to his kingdom. But now he began to repent. What I have done wrong? I should not have done this. If really he was in 
no sense in samadhi. I am watching them of one the part Krishna. Oh, I think today myself, my identity and everything will be destroyed. Up and down. And in the meantime, the disciples of Samikrishi came. One. No. Mother. His son Sengi, he caught, but he sent another. And he repeated his son, <coughs> you have done wrong. Without him, everything will be killed in this world. And he was very high class of religious, simply minded king. You are done wrong. For a little small offense. And you have to give him also my big punishment. I don't like it. But he thought that it is the desire of Krishna. Call. I cannot do it. And then he sent you one disciple. And he went and told King or Samikar, Rishi has told me to tell you that after seven days just finishing as poisonous sank you. Anyhow, fight you and you will be finished. At once he gave his crown, a, a royal dresses and everything, and he gave kingdom to his son Janmeja. And he went on the Ganges side and he sat facing north. And he left his <laughs> taking feet, food and water and everything. And he was remembering Krishna. Oh, very good. I'm not this way. I was so much involved in Grihasti and Kriya. Now in all. Now Krishna has given a chance. And in the meantime he saw that Nara, Vyasa, Parasa, Gautam, Jagyavalka, Hari, Kabi Hari Antarich, and from South Agastya, all realized soul from whole India, from whole world. At once in a moment they came. How they came? Oh, they know how. <laughs> <laughs> no telephone, nothing, and they knew. <laughs> and all came. And then he began to tell Bhaiket Maharaj. Who tells that a soft uh, that a cause had come to me? Jesam Sat Dan Dasana Sutanta Bhai Griha. Tesan Pasan Unam Unam Oh, this Guni more than Krishna. And they have come all together here. I am taking their person. I am speaking with them. And they can do, they, if they wish, by course we go. But even they have come. So it is not a cause, but it is a benediction for And then he asked, in the meantime, Sukadeva Goswami came and he asked two questions. First, what is the duty of a person who is going to die just now? And what is the duty of a person who will die? And then he begins to ask, Go, Pranam! Thus Srimad Bhagavad Gita began. Now, there are so many teachings of Kapil Dev and so many things. How Vidu came after battle, Mahabharat battle, and he met with Hrithrasta and Gandhari and told, Why you are here? When he is giving you like talks, something to eat. What you want? Your hundred sons and so many all are killed now. 
What you want to see more? Can be told. What can I do? I am blind. Oh, at once come with me. And in the midnight, he took the cross with him and confided. No. Now this time comes into his mother's dekra, not fully. And he took them in the way to Haridwar and more of the men, more of them, Rishi kids, more dense forest. And there he told Dekra, take your mind from your body. And mind to so, show and so, so you should be go to Krishna. Forget everything. And in the meantime, after seven days, fire came. And for a fork. And he was fired twice. Both. And they were. And liberated. Because they have given their soul and mind to Krishna. There are so many more teachings of the day So I want to tell some sweet pastimes of Krishna also. So I am coming gradually. You should know. No. Like Sarupya, I can see not pleasure. Even Arjun. Pandava and Draupadi are uh, doing pastorities in Rakhapu. Whether they have attained Braj Bhakti or Braj Bhat or not, it is in doubt. So what to tell them? <laughs> very high, you are very lucky that a desire has come. Huh? Something very strange. Do you want to go to heaven? Anyone? No. no. <laughs> Do you want to have liberation, mukti? No. Anyone? No. <laughs> After that, do you want to be the associates of Ramchandra? No. Oh, one, one, one. <laughs> I do you want to be the king of Krishna in Dwarka? No. 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 And do you want to be in Vrindavan like friends? No. 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 Like Vata Jasoda and no. No. Nanda Baba? Only like Gopi. <laughs> so you are very fortunate to hear all these things and try to fix your aim and object of your sadhana life. This is a very good success in your life. You should think or very, very fortunate you. But one, one thing I request you, if you want to attend this, don't criticize anyone by now. Hmm. Never in any way try to cut that tongue, your, your tongue, your spiritual call. Try to <laughs> And punish that tongue. If <laughs> mine one, but if you are set by this, Oh. Sadhusam Nam Kirtan Bhagavat Saman Matura Varsi Murti Sadhai Shivan Sakal Tatana Sesti E Panjang Krishna Prem Janmai Pantera. Very surely you will have. You will have. Now, you should try to follow my instructions. Not my instruction, my Guru Parampara instruction and instruction of Srila Pyarte, Srila Sukhdev Goswami, Narada, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially Rupa and 
problem. So try to always remember my words. Don't have any doubt in Guru, Vaishnava, Bhagavad. And thus your life should be successful. Now, uh, you know the bhakti of Dhruva. Dhruva. You can take it some in short. In this great literature, the Granta Raj, the king of all Shastras, Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many teachings, many Upakyans, many histories of great devotees, uh, how they have performed their sadam bhajan and the various uh, attainments that they have gotten as a result. So, in gradual progressive way, the Srimad Bhagavatam is giving these various histories of the universe. One of them uh, is the history of Dhruva Maharaj. So, this is in the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, describing that Dhruva Maharaj, uh, he was the son of King Uttanapad, and he was in the dynasty of Swayam Bhuva Manu. So, at the very beginning of the universe, these great personalities, like Prajapatis, they, they were the sons of Brahmaji, and they populated the whole universe. So, <clears throat> so, Dhruva Maharaj took birth from King Uttanapad and King Uttanapad had two wives, Suruchi and Suniti. And Suniti was the mother of Dhruva Maharaj. But actually King Uttanapad, he had a, uh, he had a more favor toward his wife Suruchi. Uh, so, one day, when Dhruva Maharaj came, to the court of King Uttanapad, he came there. He came there, and he wanted to sit on the lap of his father. But actually, Suruchi was standing nearby, the stepmother, and she rebuked little boy Dhruva, who at that time was only five years old, and she told him, "You cannot sit on the lap of your father, because you have not come from my womb." Only if you come from my womb, then you can sit on the lap of your father. When Juba, as a young boy, heard this, it, he became very uh, upset within his heart. Juba was actually from the Kshatriya dynasty. And when Kshatriyas are insulted, it is very difficult. Like if, if a, someone steps onto a snake, suddenly the snake will rear its head. So in the same way Juba, he became very insulted by this. And then he ran, crying tears, to his mother Suniti. And he told his mother why this has happened. And his mother told that it is true, your father is more favored toward uh, Suruchi. But actually you should know uh, that only the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he can fulfill all of your desires. Dhruva Maharaj, at that time, he became very determined. He wanted to attain a kingdom even greater than his father and his grandfather. He wanted to rule the entire universe. So this desire rose up within his heart. And his mother gave him some instruction that if you want to fulfill your desire, because she was a very religious lady, uh, she was very dharmic, and she was also a, a devotee of the Supreme Lord. So she told 
that if you want to fulfill your desire, then you will have to satisfy the Supreme Lord. And Dhruva Maharaj, he uh, asked, where can I locate him? Where can I find him? She told that many rishis, many saints, they go to the forest and they absorb themselves very deeply in meditations and yoga and there they gain darshan of the Supreme Lord. So at that moment, Dhruva Maharaj, with very great determination, he immediately left the palace and he began to go into the forest. Along the way, as he came towards the forest, Sri Narad Muni, the great sage, uh, the great spiritual master, as Srila Gurudev told us, of so many great devotees in the universe, he suddenly appeared there in front of Dhruva Maharaj and he asked him, where are you going? Oh, he told, I'm going to the forest. I want to uh, find, I want to see the Supreme Lord himself, Bhagavan. So Narada Muni, at that time he took compassion on Dhruva and he gave him instruction and he also gave, imparted a particular mantra to him. So at that time, Dhruva Maharaj very obediently accepted the order of Narada Muni who told him that he must chant this mantra with great faith and great determination. And now, Dhruva Maharaj went into the forest. So, he located himself in a very secluded place, nearby to a, a very beautiful stream, very purified and sanctified and quiet place. And now Dhruva began to engage in very intensive austerities as he was chanting this mantra. And he began to abstain from eating even he was only eating leaves from the trees at one point. Then gradually, gradually he reduced to only drinking water and then reduced that to only drinking water a few drops after a few days. Finally he stopped even drinking water. Then Dhruva Maharaj began to only take air, breathing. And gradually, gradually, by the process of breath control, pranayam, oh, he um, even withdrew his breathing processes. And at that point, when Dhruva Maharaj, after six months of doing these intense austerities and completely absorbed in chanting his mantra, uh, the whole universe was feeling even choked by his austerity. So suddenly at that time, the Supreme Lord, Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan, he appeared there in front of Dhruva Maharaj. And when he appeared in front of Dhruva. Suddenly Dhruva Maharaj's meditation broke and he fell in doing pranams, full obeisances before the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. And at that time he rose up and all of his body was trembling and he felt all ecstatic symptoms to see the Supreme Lord before himself. And now he tried to speak something but he could not because he was just a little boy and he was so overwhelmed. But Lord Vishnu took his conch shell, uh, his shanka, and he touched the head of uh, Dhruva. And now Dhruva began to offer very beautiful prayers, very eloquent, poetical uh, mantras and prayers to the Supreme Lord. And at that time, Lord Vishnu, he told to Dhruva Maharaj, now you should ask me for any benediction. I will grant your heart's desire. So Dhruva Maharaj, although he had come into the forest with this intense desire to gain a material kingdom, great vast wealth and power, uh, but when he saw Lord Vishnu, his heart melted and actually he lamented very deeply within his heart that I was motivated by such a material desire and I worshipped you for this useless material desire now that I have seen your lotus feet now that I have seen your beautiful form oh I realize that I don't want anything I only want to serve your lotus feet huh? and real I also realize that my attempt to gain all of these material things was just like searching for little broken pieces of glass but now I realize that while I was searching for these little pieces of glass oh I have found a very valuable jewel. I have found your divine lotus feet. So in this way, Dhruva Maharaj told Lord Vishnu, Swamin Kritartosmi Varamna Jati. I am fully satisfied. I don't want any kind of benediction. But then Lord Vishnu, he insisted and he told Dhruva, no, you have come to me 
with this desire. I must fulfill your desire. And Dhruva Maharaj had to accept uh, a kingdom greater than his grandfather. For 36,000 years, he had to become a king and ruler within this universe. But then Lord Vishnu gave him the benediction that after that time period, or oh, then he would be able to attain his eternal position. And within this very universe, he would be able to rule an entire Vaikuntha planet, a spiritual planet, Dhruva Loka, which is the pole star within the universe. And there Dhruva Maharaj would reside, and Lord Vishnu would be there, residing on the same planet. So he would attain this Salokya liberation, to live on the same planet as the Supreme Lord. So in this way, Dhruva Maharaj, by his great uh, austerities, and by following the order of his Gurudev, Narada Muni, and following his, his instruction to chant the mantra which he gave to him, oh, in this way, Sri Lord Vishnu came and he revealed himself to Dhruva. But the point that is to be learned from this Upakyan, from this instruction, is that one should never approach the Lord with any kind of material desire whatsoever. It should be anya vilashita shunyam, devoid of any other desires, and only favorable, anakulyena krishnanushilana, only favorable to the Supreme Lord for His satisfaction. But if one approaches, then you will run this risk, as Dhruva Maharaj had done. Your eternal uh, association with the Lord and attainment of uh, His eternal abode, it will be delayed. And you will have to accept so many temporary material benedictions within this world. So Dhruva Maharaj is listed as a bhakta within the category of the devotees of the Lord. But he had some material desire, sakam bhakta. So he worshipped the Lord with these desires. And in this way, gradually, his desires became removed by the power of the Supreme Lord and the benedictions of his Guru Dev. By this katha, you should know that through by mantra, given by the Guru, and he received that position. Why you cannot? More better superior mantra are with you. Brahma Gayatri. And then Guru Mantra, Guru Gayatri, Gaur Mantra, Gaur Gayatri. Oh, Gopal Mantra, essence of all the mantra. And more, come back. And moreover, you are Harina. So why you cannot attend? I think, oh, he took six, uh, six months and very easily chanting and remembering and if you are doing very strictly your months with great honor, you must be successful. But only thing that you should not want any worldly thing, never and never, only that like chata. One, the water of only Swati Nakshatra. So you want only Radha Raksha. Not if Krishna coming and giving you, oh, take this benediction, that benediction, that benediction, refuse. <laughs> we will die, we will not take anything but Nakshatra. <laughs> After that, Purunjan Upakhyam, very good Upakhyam. Nara told to one Maharaj. Prachin Bhai, Far Bhai Raja, and then Bhart Charitra. How Bhart was? Electric Kingdom, in his young age, like a stool and a yuri, and he came to the forest to meditate and serve Krishna. He reached up to God. But what became? He was attached to any dear baby and he lost his teeth. But you, in brief, very brief. <laughs>
So all of you may know that present day India is called Bharat Bharat because it's named after the great king Bharat. So Bharat Maharaj, at the half point of his lifetime, he gave a real example and he renounced everything. His, renunci his renunciation was very natural and he went to the Himalayas and was performing bhajan there. His bhajan had attained such a high sky above the Himalayas. In Gandaki River. In Gandaki, where Sagar Gram. So, what a level of bhajan he had attained is described that his heart was like an oak, like a lake of Bhakti Ras, and inside that he would drown. As he would remember Krishna, tears would come from his eyes, his voice would choke, all the hairs on his body would stand on end. So, his bhajan had reached such a high level. So, one day, very quickly, one female deer, though, who was heavily pregnant, she was running from the chase of a tiger. And as she left her body on the side of the river, the baby deer was born and was floating down the river. And with her eyes, she was looking, Oh, Bharat Maharaj, what type of son are you? You cannot even have mercy on my son. So Bharat Maharaj, he picked the baby deer out of the water and began to protect it. So he even, he began picking pieces of grass and feeding to the deer. He began nourishing, protecting, night time he would sleep with it. In fact, he became so much absorbed in contemplation and with affection to the deer, his meditation in Southern Bhajan was completely destroyed. When he'd sit in meditation, the deer would come and poke him with his soft horns. So Bharat Maharaj, his mind was completely attached to the deer. So one day, the baby deer, she saw the, the big deer running in the forest. He left Bharat Maharaj and ran to the forest, Bharat Maharaj became completely mad in lamentation. So, be quick. So, even Bharat Maharaj was looking at the moon, the moon is called Satada. Oh, moon is very fortunate, look, my son is there. Oh, earth, what austerities you have performed, the footprints of my son are on you. Thinking like this, Bharat became mad. Bharat Maharaj forgot about death. The death did not forget about Bharat Maharaj. Yesham, some <coughs> Krishna says, Yam Yam Hadis Paramagam. Whatever you think at the time of death, that is your next destination. So Bharat Maharaj, at the time of death, he was completely infatuated with a deer, and he remembered a deer. As a result, he took birth as a deer. Guru Mahārāj said Bharat Maharaj made one mistake, he took three more births. But how many mistakes we are making every day, every month? So Bharat Maharaj, as a result of his bhajan, he was not an ordinary deer. He could remember the mistakes he made and he lamented. He would never associate with other deer and at a young age he ran away from his mother and lived in the, at the, near the ashram of the sadhus and was always hearing Harikata and he waited when this body would be finished. So next birth, he took birth in a Brahmin family. So Bharat Maharaj was very careful not to make the same mistake again. Then his father was a very high class Brahmin his father very tried very hard to educate him in all the type of smarta karma. But Bharat Maharaj said, no, this life is only bhajan. His father tried very hard to educate him, but Bharat Maharaj ignored all that and practiced Hari Bhajan. So, his father left the body in great disappointment. His nine brothers mistreated Bharat Maharaj very greatly. They never used to feed him anything, they never used to give him any cloth. They used to give Bharat Maharaj the burnt vegetables from the bottom of the pot, the old rice, but Bharat Maharaj ate everything considering it nectar. So, one day, Bharat Maharaj used to put Bharat Maharaj in charge of guarding the fields. So, Bharat Maharaj was very happy they're doing bhajan. So, Jad Bharat. Jad, jad means inert, because he would pretend to be mad, like useless Jad Bharat. One day, the king of Sindhu Desh, Rahugana, he was going from there, going towards where the Ganga enters into the Bay of Bengal. He went to see Kapil Rishi. So that time... So... No, no, let me... So... Bharat Maharaj 
the king Rahoganat was being carried on his palanquin and one of the carriers, he was injured, so they needed a spare tire. All they saw Bharat Maharaj was very powerful, very strong, and by force, even though Bharat Maharaj was so exalted, he was not fit for that work, by force they made him carry the palanquin. The palanquin, but Jad Bharat Maharaj, he never gave up his character. Oh, all are related to Krishna. So when he would walk on the ground, he would see the ants and he would move here and there, just side to side. Inside Rahugana, crack his head on the top of the palanquin. What's going on there? Oh, Bharat, oh, foolish fellow. Are your carriers not cooperating with you? Maybe they are not walking correctly, but you are okay. And he chastised him very strongly. Bharat Maharaj was silent. He just tolerated. Again, again, they were walking, and again, Bharat Maharaj, Jab Bharat, was moving to avoid the ants. Rahugana became very angry. Oh fool, are you mad? Are you dead despite the life in your body? Don't you know who I am? I you. I am king. I will punish you like Ramaraj punishes the sinful. So Bharat Maharaj was completely undisturbed and smiling. He said, O oh, king, what you have said in sarcasm is definitely true. What <laughs> love O oh, king, what you have said in sarcasm is definitely true. Isn't it? You have said, oh, I am experience, you are experiencing great difficulty carrying this palanquin. This is your rubbish. I am not experiencing any difficulty because I am not carrying the palanquin. This body is carrying the palanquin. Therefore, I have nothing to do with this body, nor this palanquin, nor the present situation I am in. You know nothing about the difference between the soul and the body. For King, the body is not fat, nor thin, nor stout, nor black, nor white, nor anything else that you have no said no nothing. You said, therefore happiness, distress, mental fatigue, material desires, death, birth, these are all come from the material mind. But I have nothing to do with any of this. O oh, king, you have said, I am king and you are servant. Is this true? But I say this is a temporary situation. And soon maybe I will be king and you will be servant. And you have said that I am dead despite living. But King, I may let you know this is a fact for every living being in this world. Everyone's body is dead and that's only alive because of the presence of the Jivatma. O oh, King, you have said that I am mad despite living. But you should know that I am not mad. I am perfected, liberated, soul, servant of the Supreme Lord. And if you think I am mad and punishing me, what's the use of your punishment? Like beating a dead horse is no benefit. O oh, King, you have given me so nice instructions, what should I do? Shall I carry your palanquin again? So Bharat, the king of Huguenot, became very afraid. He leapt down from his palanquin and fell up weeping at the feet of Bharat Maharaj. Jad Bharat, he said, I am not afraid of anything. I can even fight with Lord Shiva. I mean, even fight with death. I am not afraid of anything. I am only afraid of one thing. That is committing offense to the lotus feet of Vaishnavas and Brahmanas. Please forgive me. So very quickly, beautiful instructions Bharat Maharaj gave to King Rahul. It goes back to who are you? Who are you? Then? Bharat Maharaj, Rahul Nadav, who are you? You are moving in a disguised form as if to examine others. I cannot understand who you are. Are you Kapil Dev? Are you Vishishta? Are you? And many names he gave. Atal Rishi, are you this, are you that? So Bharat Maharaj said, well, maybe you know me. My name is Bharat. Oh, my name was Bharat. Before your oh, oh, father's what the emperor of whole universe and then the world. Oh, same part you are. And then Sadha came. Sometimes Gurudev and the Vaishnavas will explain their past lifetime, their life history to us, then we will get so much inspiration and faith in them. Otherwise we think ordinary person this is not good for us. So but the Raghunath Maharaj said, I cannot understand what you say. You say there is no relationship between the body and the soul. But I think this is not true. Like if you have a pot of kitchen, a pot of rice, the fire heats the pot, the pot boils the water, and the water boils the rice. So I think in the same way there is a relationship between the body and the mind, and the body and the soul. The body suffers, the mind experiences pain and pleasure, and then the Atma thinks, I am happy, I am suffering. So then Bharat Maharaj, he said, O oh, King, you are speaking very foolishly. You have no experience whatsoever. Don't you know this? The only cause of happiness and distress, the only cause 
which causes the living entity to move through the 8,400,000 different species of life. There is only one cause, that is the mind. The mind is like an uncontrolled elephant. Therefore, he drives the living entity through the different species of life. Therefore, King, you should try to control this stupid mind. This mind is very wicked, very difficult to control. Even a yogi, like a hunter who captures a deer and ties him very tightly, in the same way, even a yogi who wants to control the mind, he will never trust the mind. Therefore, like, an, like a lamb, when the wick is too long or too short, it gives insufficient light or much smoke is produced. But when the lamp is perfectly trimmed, that same lamp is the cause of illumination. In the same way, Bharat Maharaj, when his mind is attached to the three modes of nature, the mind is the cause of repeated birth and death. In the same mind, when attached to the feet of, Hari Guru Vaishnav, that same mind is the cause of liberation. So Bhara Sarahukanat Maharaj said, Gurudev, everything you are saying is very nice. I cannot understand, I cannot realize it. So at that time Rukanat Maharaj said, of course, you, there's only one way you can re realize that. By Rukanat Maharaj. Rukanat Tapas Sana Jati Na Chaikya Nir Vona Kriyadva Na Chandis Sana Iva Janati Surya Vina Mahapada Rajogi Shekham Famous verse. O King, this, the Atma cannot be realized by so much Ikja, means deity worship, tapasya, or by tapasasa, or by very much austerities. Which type of austerities? Jalad de Surya. Jalad de means some yogis in the winter time they submerge themselves up to the neck in the freezing cold waters and do meditation. Or they sit themselves amongst the plants only. Four files on either side and in the midday sun they meditate. Oh, Rukhanat, the Atma cannot be realized by austerities, by worship, by mundane reading of the Vedas, nor by your own efforts. And how the Atma can be realized? There is only one way you can realize King. Fall the feet of a pure Vaishnava and take his foot dust and smear it on the top from head to toe. Then you can understand the Atma, otherwise you can never understand. Thank you. speaking, especially so many things, it's not too from her to her camp. Don't be attached to anything. You can do your duty. Only. But don't act, be attached to anything in this world, even to your wife, your husband, children, or animals like dogs and cats and fish. Otherwise, you have to come in the form of cat and dog. And one thing more, at the time of day, what was remembering only? Dear, 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 where he went. And so he came in the form of dear. So if at the time of day you are meditating Radha and Krishna and his associates, why you can be like that? You must be. Very easily you can. So from beginning, now, you should try to always remember Krishna and his jokes. Very easily you can be the associate of Krishna. Then but Maharaj Parishit has something here, feeling that I have done some mistake, I have done some aparat on Rishi, Shamik Rishi. So knowing this, Sudha Goswami said, don't be hopeless of, don't think like so. Even a Durachari, characterless, drunkard, and useless person, like Ajami, he only called his son, he, he had kept his son name, Nara. And what he came? He went to by So don't only listen to Harikatha. And by this you will be liberated and you will have Guru Vrindavan. So 
and break of oh, Prabhu. What name? Oh, Prada Khan Prabhu. Can you tell Ajami? No?
when Vishnu do this. I have sadhu samna, I am hearing this kata, this hari kata. I have become purified and I understand what is my duty now. I will rectify myself. And with a repentant attitude, he went to Harivar. And there he took sadhu samna, performed bhajan. And at the end of his life, he perfected himself and went back home, back to God. So, if anyone will chant Hare Krishna at the time of day, anyhow give Namapa, day Pindaka. And again you can have chant like Ajami. And if you are chanting pure, Suthane at Mantra Guru Vinda Guru and with love and affection in the guidance of Rupa Goswami, then not to even Guru or direct to Vinda. So you should chant and remember Krishna. After that he told how Jai Vijay was the high class of associate of Narayan. Narayan had fulfilled all his desires, but he wanted to fight and to test. So at once, this came that anyhow, if he will be demon, even we will fulfill the desire of my Prabhu. At once Krishna inspired and they came and they checked him not to come to the Narayan and they caused. And then when Krishna took his Maya, both they determined how why he had done. But for three journeys, like that. Oh. They first began Hirnakas to Hirnaksha, then Raman, Kumkar, and in third, Dantabhakra and Sishma. And by Krishna, oh, they, will, they were totally, and, and they went to Nakhpaipur. Here, in this story, he told Pralad Maharaj. In brief, you should tell the Charitra and his last teachings.
So then, what is waiting for Sturgis? Indra and the Devatas, they came and they kidnapped the wife of Hiranyakashipu because they thought, now she's pregnant, another demon will come in her womb, so we'll kill him before he's born. But now the Rishi came there and he told them, oh, this is not a demon in the womb of uh, Kayadu, he is a great devotee. So they did Parikrama of that great devotee and Pranam and they left for the heavenly planets. Then Nagarishi, he took the wife of Hirani Kashipu, Kayadu, to his ashram, that is at Narayakun. And there he told Harikatha to her for 60,000 years. But after that she forgot everything. But the child who was in the womb, hearing Harikatha for 60,000 years from Narayakun, how qualified he would be after hearing 60,000 years. So when he was born, he was a, a great devotee. So in the meantime, Hirani Kashipu, he did his austerities and Lord Brahma appeared to him and said, I give you a benediction. What do you want? He said, I want to be immortal. Brahmaji said, that I myself am not immortal. Ask for something else. Then he give me the benediction that I will not be killed in the day or the night, in the, any month, or if I should not be killed on the land or in the air or in the sky or by any weapon or by any human being or animal or any cre creature created by you, which is everyone in the whole universe. And in this way, he asked for all of these benedictions and he thought that when they all add up together, it's the same as being immortal. So then the Brahmaji, he gave that benediction and went away. And then the Kashipu began his reign of terror. At once he attacked the heavenly planets, he kicked Indra out from his throne. All the demigods ran away and were hiding here and there in the universe. And for sitting on the throne of Indra, he began to control the whole universe. Even though he was drunk, intoxicated, his eyes were rolling, but still, he reversed the, mm, all the karmas. If you do pious activities, then a bad reaction will come. And he made it that all the uh, plants and fruits come from the ground without even doing any work. In this way, he made a complete chaos throughout the whole universe. He was so powerful. So, his wife had given birth to a child, only five years old, for life. And he was going to school. And he ran in Kashipu. He wanted to. He had so much affection, attachment attachment to his child and his the mother of Pallad dressed him, bathed him, decorated him and brought him before his father. So Hirani Kashiko called all my son please come and took his son in his lap and he was smelling his head and tears of parental affection came from in his eyes. He had so much attachment. So I had to be attached to your own family members is not necessarily the quality of a great devotee. Even a great demon, such as Ivan Kashipu, he has this quality also. So, he said, oh my dear son, can you tell me, what is the best thing that you have learned at school? Hmm? So then, Prahlad Maharaj, he said, Tat sadhu manye asuravaya dehinam sada samudvigna viyama satyaha Itvaku patam viyamanda kupam vano gacham yad harima sayita Oh, best among the demons, Asura Varga. Here in Kazuko is not slow. Oh, best among the demons. Hmm? The, best, the best knowledge I know is this. Hmm? That Sadasa Mudvikna Asat Diham Graha. Diham Asat Graha. Those who have accepted the physical body and mind to be the self are always embarrassed by one difficult situation, embarrassing situation after another, or Udvigna, many, many disturbances. Therefore, what should one do? Hitvastapatam Vriyamanta Kupam. One should give up the bodily conception of life, which is epitomized by attachment to wife, children, family and society. Why? Because it's Vriyamanta Kupam. It's like a dark well. Once a traveler was wandering in the forest, and there was a well, disused, and grass had grown over it. And he came there, and he fell through the grass and went down the well. As he was falling, he caught the branches, two branches of a tree that were hanging in the well. And now he saw that at the bottom of the well, some snakes, they were in their hoods, and they were ready to bite him and kill him. He looked at the top, and the tiger was there, licking his lips and waiting to eat him also. And he was hanging from two branches. But from the sides of the well, two rats came out, one black and one white. 
and they came and they began to chew on the branches that he was hanging from it. So death and danger was all around him. And at that time, in the tree above, there was a um, beehive. And from shaking the tree, some honey began to drip very close to where he was hanging. So he noticed that honey was drinking, so he extended his tongue and one drop landed on the tip of his tongue. Hmm. How nice. Like this. So, this is a story. It seems to be funny, but actually it's not funny. It's very, very serious. What does it mean? It means that those who are in the bodily conception of life, attached to their family members, they have fallen into a dark well of material attachment. Just as this man had fallen in a dark well. Everywhere there is danger. At the bottom, so many snakes, many problems come in this life. One after another, we cannot check them. And death is waiting for us. He's hanging from two branches. This, these branches represent his pious and impious activities. His punya karma and papa karma. Our life is composed of these things. But two rats, one black and white, black rat means night and the white rat is day. Each day and each night that passes is eating away at our uh, at the reactions to our activities, punya karma and papa karma. And when they have been exhausted, our prana, the karma connected with this body, what will happen? Then we must die. But in the middle of all this danger and mm, calamity, there's a drop of honey. A drop of honey comes. He tasted with his tongue that drop of honey. What is that? That is the material affection of one's relatives in this world. When our children say, Oh, daddy, mummy, mummy. Then even though the whole day was completely hellish from beginning to end, or when a child would say, oh, daddy, daddy, mommy, mm -hmm. then we forget everything, we think this world is wonderful. Mm -hmm. If you are mm -hmm. beloved, we'll tell you, I love you, you are so wonderful. Then uh, we will think, yes, I am great. Mm -hmm. This person is intelligent, they are the only one in the world who recognize my qualities. Even if they are using for the other 23 hours and 55 minutes of the day, oh, one sweet word, forget everything. So this is the honey. So Prahlad Maharaj says, all in this world are in this predicament, so what should be done? This dark well is what? The Atmapa. It blocks the progress of the soul. The soul cannot grow, he cannot evolve, he cannot go towards God. Therefore, one should leave this situation at once. And Vanam Gato Yad Harimashweta. One should go to Van, Brindavan. One should go to the forest. To go to the forest means what? To go to Sadhu Sangha, have the association of pure Vaishnavas. And in their association, under their guidance, Yad Hari Mashreka, take shelter of the lotus feet of Hari. When Hiranya Kashipu heard this, he was surprised. He looked at the teachers of Pallad Maharaj. He said, so the good intelligence of children is spoiled by bad association. Mm -hmm. It seems that some of those Vaishnavas, they may have been coming into the palace in disguise and by their association his intelligence has become polluted. So we take him away, educate him in the real values of life. Mm -hmm. That means politics, is diplomacy and how to collect money and be powerful and collect reputation. So Sandra and Amaka, they gave their word, but we'll take care of him, don't worry. And they took blood away and they began to educate him in materialistic values. After some time, again, the mother of Hiranyakashipu, the mother of Pallad, brought her son to Hiranyakashipu and again he took his son in his lap and affectionately embraced him and said, Oh, can you tell me, what is the best thing that you have learned? This time Pallad Maharaj, he said, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Svaranam Padadevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atma Nivedanam Iti Pumsa Pita Vishnum Bhaktis Chaina Vlakshana Kreti Bhagavatya Dhatam Nyedita Muttamam So without any fear and very politely he said to his father I think that a person who has surrendered completely where? The Tipo Sabita Vishnu. Unto Vishnu. But there are two Vishnus. One is the Vishayi. 
Bhagavan and other Ashray Bhagavan. First take shelter of Ashray Bhagavan, that means she grew. Afterwards one can realize Vishay Bhagavan, she, Krishna. One who has surrendered himself unconditionally at the lotus feet of Guru. And after that, he engages in Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaram, hearing, chanting, remembering, etc. He is the most learning person. It is understood that he has, uh, he has understood that all the essence of life. So here Prahlad Maharaj said, first surrender, then hear, chant, remember. If one is hearing, chanting and remembering, but is independent and whimsical and not surrendered to the lotus feet of Sadhguru, then he's hearing, chanting, remembering, it can never be called bhakti. It is only a pass, only drama, only for show. So when Hirani Kashipu heard this, or then he pushed his child on his lap. He said, if any part of the body becomes diseased, then what should you do? Or you have to cut it off. So the least like part of my body, he should be cut down. Take him away and kill him. So then the gods came and took Prahlad away and they tried to kill him. They tried to give him poison. They put him among deadly snakes. They tried to throw him under the feet of stampeding elephants. They threw him from the tops of mountains in many ways. But it, everything failed. Even Hirani Kashipu's sister, Holika, tried to catch him in a fire, but she herself was killed and Prahlad Maharaj, he was safe and sound, only chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare Chanting the name of Krishna, he was untouched. Then Hirani Kashipu became very worried. He was so afraid. He thought, what is this? If I can't kill him, then perhaps he will kill me. And when he was worried, Sada and Amarka, the two teachers, of Prahlad, the sons of Shukracharya, they told him, don't be worried, our father is away now, but just soon he will come back and he is very learned, he will think of a solution. So then, the, again Prahlad went to school. So when the school was going on, his behavior was good, so the teachers made him the class monitor. And when they went for their break, they told him, look after the other students. Then, the teachers went away, and when the cats away, mice will play. So all the children began to play around. But the Lord March called them, Oh, my dear friends, please listen to me. I have something to tell you. Hmm? We don't waste your time playing around. You should take up the process of devotion to God, spiritual life. The children said, Oh, Pallad, we're kids now. So we just want to play and we'll do that and later when we're old. <laughs> So Prahlad Maharaj, he said, this policy is not good. Why? Kaumara acharet ka gyodama bhagavatan hitam, lulabha manavajanma yadakta apya dhruvam atadam 